All right, hello everybody. I have been having numerous technical difficulties today, so hopefully nothing bad happens during this. I've been trying to figure it out. I think about my last live stream kind of got deleted and everything, and no, not for this class, but the last one I just did. And I'm also dealing with um, things like just getting having, having trouble with the connection here. So hopefully we're all good. Um, and sorry about that if we do have problems. But anyway, I um, want to go ahead and go over the homework today. And like I said, today, rather than you know starting to do a review and have a test or quiz for this chapter, we're going to jump right in to chapter uh, 13 right after this. So we're going to finish up um, our chapter on sound, and we're going to jump right into a chapter on light, mirrors, lenses, all that kind of stuff. And um, I just want to say there's a part of the sound chapter, the last part on um, I think harmonics and that kind of stuff. We're not going to talk about that. I don't think harmonics are going to be that important to us. So we want to make sure we have some time to cover electricity and circuits and all that kind of stuff later on. So we're just going to cover the, the main highlights. And I think we're done with sound after this. So in my opinion, my kind of idea of what's the most important thing for this chapter, it would probably be like number one here. Okay. So some idea of how power so, so sound power is related to sound intensity and why that is, right? Because sound goes off unidirectionally, so in all different directions, um, or, or adirectionally, sorry about that. And, and then that sound uh, intensity decreases as the square of the distance. So it's basically the, the power divided by 4 pi r squared and how that intensity is related to the, um, the decibel level, all right? And so you can calculate decibels um, from the sound intensity and to understand that whole idea. So that's, so number one is probably the most important question for this whole chapter, okay? Me, and um, I just wanna remind everybody who's listening that we do have a chess tournament today. Chess tournament is gonna be at 3.30 today, right after class. So if you're interested, um, I believe I sent out an email, so get that you know, get somebody to forward it to you, or you can contact me right afterwards, okay? All right, so I'm not checking my email right now, so if you are somehow interested in that chess tournament, make sure you get hooked up with somebody that's got the link. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm going to go ahead and go over this homework before we jump into the new stuff. Hopefully you guys saw the new assignment online, um, and let's we already went through one and two. Let's do number three together here. Convert the following intensities to decibels. And so these um, are all gonna follow the equation that we have above. So, so 0.2 meters, um, per, 0.2 watts per square meter. Yes, thank you, Adam. Adam has the link if anybody needs it. 0.2 watts per square meter. That's actually a pretty pretty loud intensity, and let's see what that works out to be. And, and we can see down here, two watts per square meter, that's even more intense. Now, this is 10 times as intense, so let's think, even before we solve it, let's think what the decibel difference is gonna be, okay? A 10-fold increase would be an increase in one bell, right? Because one bell is a log scale, one bell is um, 10 to the first, more. Right, or 10 times more than this. One bell is, is 10 decibels. So 10 times one is you know, 10. So that's gonna be, we're expecting a tenfold increase in the decibel level when we look at these two numbers. Let's actually do the calculation. So your decibels are gonna be 10 times the log of your intensity, 0.2, divided by um, one times 10 to the minus 12th. And the watts per square meter are gonna be canceling out on the top and the bottom of that. So it's gonna be 0.2 divided by one E negative 12. And that's gonna get me a, a fairly large number. So let's take the log of that. We're gonna do 10 log of our answer. And is that 113? Yeah, it, that is a loud sound, right? Anything over 100 is significantly loud. Okay, 113 decibels. Okay, um, 
pretty much anything over 100 is going to be you know loud and loud enough to cause damage but the threshold of pain is one um, and so one has a decibel level is 120 decibels that's the threshold of pain and it can cause immediate damage um, well, anytime you're over 100 decibels uh, you prolonged listening to something in this range of 113 that can cause damage too but not it's not at the level where it's going to cause immediate damage to your ears this one however is and like i said we expect this one because it's 10 times more we expect it to be um, 123. If this is 113, this should be 123. And let's see if that works out. Decibels equals 10 log 0.2 1 times 10 to the minus 12. Oops, not this is not 0.2, this is 2. So forget that point. And so let's do that. 2 divided by 1 e negative 12 is 2 to the 12th. And then 10 log of that is 123, exactly what we'd expect, 123 or 10 decibels more, 123 decibels, okay? So each time you go up ten, um, tenfold in decibel level, it's going to be 10 times more intense the sound. Now the loudness, it doesn't seem 10 times as loud, it might only seem, let's say, twice as loud or something like that. Um, the loudness is not 10 times as loud, but the intensity is, because your ears are more on a log scale. Okay, so how about this one? Um, now we're going from decibels back to sound intensity. And so we solved the problem like that before basically rearranging this. And in order to rearrange it, you need to know something about logs, which I expect all of you do because you're in physics class, which means you must have done logs at some point in time in your math class. So I went through the derivation here, but essentially your intensity is going to be 10 Tom, to the power of negative 12 plus your decibel level over 10. All right, so that's your essentially your equation right there. Um, and so let's do that. 10 to what? This is going to be negative 12 plus 50 over 10. Let's just go ahead and reduce that. 50 over 10 um, is 5. Okay, and so um, negative 12 plus 5, that's going to be 10 to the minus 7, and so that's, that's essentially your answer, right? You can use that, leave that in scientific nota notation, right? 1 times 10 to the minus 7, right? 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, and what are the units here? The units are going to be your intensity units, which are always going to be given in watts per square meter. So 50 decimals, that's a pretty small intensity there. But it's definitely right in the middle of our range of hearing, right? 50 decibels um, is something that we can hear, hear very clearly. Right? Zero decibels is the threshold of hearing, and we can barely um, make it out. I mean, if something's zero decibels, I might not be able to hear it, but you guys probably could because you guys are all young, and you haven't ever heard ridiculously loud explosions like I have. Um, so you guys all have better hearing than me. So you guys can hear something at zero decibels where I probably can't, but 50 decibels, everybody can hear that. That is everybody that can actually hear. Okay, so moving right along. We are... Um, they're the same. Jordan, they're, they're the same answer. 10 to the minus 7 or 1 times 10 to the minus 7. I just decided to put it in like a scientific notation form, but you can just write 10 to the minus 7. That's perfectly fine. Or you could write it out as 0 0.00000001 watts per square meter, but, you know, that's so many zeros that it's, it's annoying that way. So I would probably, I would write like this, you can write it like this, or you can write it like, you know, actually write it out. Anyway, that's the final answer. Right, um, I already went through the hard part right yesterday when we went through the derivation. So, if you you can go back to yesterday's live stream and you can go back and look at, at how I derived that um, this equation here, you know, or yeah, or not. But that's how it works. Okay, number five. Um, when the decibel level of traffic in the street goes from thirty decibels to sixty decibels, how? much greater is the intensity of the noise. Now, um, it's a little confusing because these are decibels and not 
like bells. So bells would be just like the pH scale, but they're decibels. So you have to realize each step in 10 is going to be 10 times more. So, so 40 is 10 times more intense than 30. 50 is 100 times, because 50 is 10 times as intense as 40, 50 is going to be 100 times as intense as 30 decibels. And so 60 decibels is going to be 1,000 times as intense. So I would write, recommend just writing it out like that to make sure you don't miss a step because people do this all the time and then they just do it really quickly in their heads and then they say 1,000 when it should be 100 or say 100 when it should be 1,000. Um, but yeah, it's 1,000. And the formula is going to be essentially um, 10 to what power? To the, in this case, it's 60 minus 30 divided by 10. Okay? Um, and so that 60 minus 30 is 30. 30 divided by 10 is 3. So 10 to the third is 1,000 times. Um, but that's essentially how you would do it. But I like this way better, just so you can see that each step in 10 decibels is 10 times as intense. Not 10 times as loud, but 10 times as intense. Okay. So, next up. If two flutists play their instruments together at the same intensity, does the sound seem twice as loud? And we're, this is kind of the same idea that we're, we've been talking about. So if, if you have two flutists, the intensity is going to be twice as intense. But does the sound seem twice as loud? And the answer is no. And the short answer of why not is because our ears are hearing in terms of volume is logarithmic. And that makes it so that when you, um, you can have this very, very large range of different volumes that you can hear. And so that's a good thing that our hearing is logarithmic. Um, but it also means that two flutists are not going to sound twice as loud. They're going to sound just a little bit louder. Um, and you would need at least 10 flutists to maybe sound twice as loud. Okay? And so that's how this logarithmic scale works. All right. Next up, a tuning fork. And you guys don't need to go into a whole lot of detail. That's, that's enough of an answer. A tuning fork consists of two metal prongs that vibrate at a single frequency when struck. Okay? What will happen if a vibrating tuning fork is placed near a tuni another tuning fork of the same frequency? So something really, really cool, because the tuning forks have the same resonance frequency, they, um, the other one, even if they're not touching, no, if they're touching, um, it doesn't matter what the frequency of the other tuning fork is, they'll both vibrate if they're touching. But if they're not touching, they can be some distance away, as long as they're the same um, they are tuned to the same frequency, the other one's going to vibrate too, okay? So essentially resonance um, of that other tuning fork causes the other one to vibrate also. And they're going to vibrate at the same frequency, okay? Now, it's not going to create energy from nowhere. Obviously, this, um, the first tuning fork is going to lose some of its energy as the other tuning fork is gaining it, but the first tuning fork is losing its energy anyway as it vibrates. Okay? So, we're not violating conservation of energy here. Um, oh, wait. Question over here. For number five, way back in number five, um, I calculated the intensity and then subtracted the intensities, assuming I shouldn't have done that since it's just 10. Um, yeah, yeah. If you want to calculate the intensity, so you can do that. Um, if you want to make your life harder, <laughs> you can actually do the calculation, and you can actually calculate the intensity. But rather than subtracting them, divide them. And if you divide them, you'll find that you know the one is a thousand times more than the other. Okay, so that's that's kind of the problem. So you, so you shouldn't subtract them; you should divide them. Um, and that's I'm sorry. I, if you had done that in test, I would probably mark it right. Okay, because when I say how much greater, it's not clear, does that mean subtract or divide, right? So you're absolutely right. I shouldn't, um, 
your answer is, would be perfectly correct on a test because how much greater can mean you know, a difference or it can mean how many times. So I really should say how many times greater. That's what I should have written to make it clear. So sorry, if this is a test, I'll make sure that I write how many times greater um, is that intensity. So, yep, perfectly fine, perfectly fine the way you did it. All right, anybody looking outside? It looks like it's getting darker. Mm, ominous. Good thing I have my lights on. Hopefully the lights, if the electricity goes out, oh, my, my poor chest hormone is going to have problems. But we're, we're, we're hoping that the um, electricity is going to be fine. All right, one more, one more problem. North American cicada. This is insane. These are real numbers. I looked this up. I'm like, what? That is crazy, right? This is, you guys probably got a crazy number here. This is just an ordinary North American cicada. That's not even the loudest cicada there's known, right? There's also like a louder cicada. Um, I forget where it is, but there's some other cicada that's even louder than this. But this is crazy, okay? It produces a sound with a power of 3.1 watts. Um, that's a lot of sound power. So one cicada resting on your shoulder about 10 centimeters from your ear. Now, you probably are not going to have one of these on your shoulder, but if you do, get that thing off you before it makes noise because you're going to go deaf from this stupid little insect, right? Um, not that they're stupid. They're pretty cool, but you know what I'm saying. All right. So we have the power, 3.1 watts, which is enormous for sound power. And we have the distance of 10 centimeters. So we're going to first calculate the intensity or this over 4 pi r squared. So 3.1 watts divided by 4 pi. And your r here, your r is not 10. Why is your r not 10? Okay. Um, your R is not 10 because this is centimeters. Watch out for your units, guys. Um, 10 centimeters, you need to convert that to meters. So R is 0.1 meter, okay? So 0.1 meter squared. So that 0.1, that's going to be 0.01 um, once you square it. But anyway, let's just do it all in our calculators. So 3.1 divided by, let's just put the whole denominator in parentheses, 4 pi times 0.1 squared, and that gets us a whopping 24 point, and remember, 2 watts per square meter is already significant. This is 24, and what do we got? We only have two sig figs, so let's just round that up to 25 watts per square meter. That's, um, that's pretty bad, right? 25 watts per square meter. Now, let's calculate the decibels. Um, and so, because we've already done this, we can have something to expect, right? So we already know two is 123 decibels. Um, and this is, not, this is not 20. So 20, 20 watts per square meter would be 133 decibels. And this is a little bit more than that, a little bit more than 20. So we're expecting something around 135 decibels, which is insanely loud, right? So that's just, it's good to do some kind of estimation like this sometimes, some, so you kind of get an idea. Uh, but let's do the actual calculation. I just did that guess. I mean, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just guessing it's going to be around 135. Uh, but let's do 10 log of 20. Now, don't use 25. Don't, don't have some kind of crazy rounding error. 24.67 watts per square meter. Um, divided by 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. My units on the top and bottom are canceling it out, so I'm not going to bother writing them. All right, so this is so let's just go ahead and do it. Divided by 1 e negative 12. There we go. Um, this is an enormous number, but let's get it to something reasonable by going 10 log of that and. Oh, I was wrong. Not 135, 134. Okay? But pretty close, right? 134. 134 decibels. Very loud. Very loud. Just you could you'll get permanent hearing damage just by that stupid insect on your shoulder. All right. Um, good night. So is it late? I guess it's late where you are. So good night. Good night if it's late. Um, and Wow, probably Japan. What, oh, I haven't been reading the comments. Here we go. Divide them. Probably Japan. 
what is that about? I don't know. Um, I must have missed something in the comments. So anyway, oh, this, J Japan is the cicada. Maybe, maybe you're right. I think it was somewhere in Asia, but I have no idea where that super loud cicada is. But it's even louder than this, which is crazy. This is already loud. So watch out for cicadas. You know, they'll, they'll hurt your hearing. Now, um, that's it for the homework. It is getting even darker outside as, um, you know, if you guys are here in Connecticut, um, then you guys do see that it's getting kind of dark outside. I think we're getting a thunderstorm soon. Hopefully it won't mess up our internet connection or our electricity. But anyway, let's go on to the new stuff. New stuff for today is light. And light has some similarities. And I, I think this whole light stuff is super, super cool. Um, some students struggle with this and they don't like the drawings, um, but I think the drawings are super fun. So hopefully you guys like this. This is one of my favorite chapters, the whole um, light chapter. We're gonna do mirrors, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do lenses, and there's a super cool lab that we can't do. Um, real bummer. I think there's actually a couple labs that we normally do with this um, to do like lens, like a lens lab. You can even do a mirror lab, um, which is really cool, but unfortunately we can't. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll come back in the end of May, but I highly doubt it. Anyway, let's go on and talk about the new stuff for today. So do your reading. I don't want to talk a whole lot. I want to go ahead and practice some chess before it gets too late. And um, let's, let's do, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, and let's talk about um, light. So light um, is, it's a wave just like, uh, um, just like sound is a wave, but as we've learned in chemistry, it's also a wave of particles. And those particles are called photons, right? And we all know that they travel at the speed of light, C, which is approximately equal to, um, oops, three, uh, just three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. It's really 2.99 some, or something like that. Um, but we're going to approximate it as three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That's super, super, super fast, um, as we're all familiar. But it's also just in some strange way happens to be kind of the speed limit of the universe that particles don't travel any faster than that. Um, the just three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we already know that the, um, that the speed of light is going to be equal to the frequency of light um, times, so the frequency of light times the wavelength of light. And we've gone through this already. We've gone through this kind of frequency, wavelength, speed calculation. So we're not going to do that again. So 13a, is, I believe, or 13 point, yeah, 13a is all about that. Um, and we're not going to go through that, those calculations, because we've already done that. Okay. But um, when we're, what we're going to focus on instead is imaging. So images of, um, of things for mirrors. We're going to start with mirrors, and then we're going to talk about lenses. So um, light travels as a wave, in, as particles in a wave, which are photons. But we're going to look at the bulk effects. So when light travels, you can have, you, it enables you to see things. And your eye has a lens in it. And... Um, you can, you know, see various different things through the lens in your eye, and also you can use lenses to do different things to, you know, change the way things look. Uh, but we're going to start with mirrors, okay? Um, but before we get there, let's talk about brightness. So brightness, for a, for light, is, is kind of, the, the term is, is illuminance. And illuminance is essentially, it's kind of like um, how we're talking about your intensity for sound. This is essentially like your light intensity. Okay? And brightness is, is kind of the way that we perceive that. Um, and so they're not exactly the same, um, but illuminance is, is kind of the same idea in, in terms of how we were talking about intensity for sound. Illuminance, illuminance is more or less an intensity for light, okay? And this illuminance, illuminance, if you have a point source, if you have a point source, it'll be similar to sound, right? It'll go out in all directions. 
right? And as it goes out in all directions, um, it's going to get less and less brighter, um, less and less bright. So less bright the further away you are. And there's a, a formula that you can calculate it, but basically um, it goes so the, the luminance is going to decrease just like your intensity. Remember, the, in, the, the sound intensity was what? It was the intensity was the power divided by 4 pi r squared. Okay? Your luminance is going to decrease with the square of the distance. But we're not going to bother doing any calculations for two reasons. First of all, because we already did the same calculations for sound. But secondly, point sources, not all light sources are point sources. As we know, you can have a flashlight. Um, you can have a whole bunch of different sources um, that are directional. And when they're directional, this is not going to happen. And in, in fact, for a laser, lasers are, are super, super neat in that the laser is so directional that the luminance doesn't decrease, or in theory, it shouldn't decrease with distance. Okay? So for a laser, it's um, one of the beautiful things about the laser is that it's, it's so directional um, that it's not going to decrease at all. Yes, you're going to get some, um, some loss, a little bit of loss of your luminance, um, illuminance, just because the particles in the air are going to absorb some of it. But if you had a perfect laser going through a, um, going through nothing, going through a, a perfect vacuum, you will get a zero decrease in illuminance um, as the distance increases. So for ordinary point sources, the illuminance will decrease with the square of the distance, but for lasers, the most um, directional type of light source is not going not to decrease at all. All right. All right, so, so much for this. We're done. We're not going to do any calculations with that. Um, I want to talk about now reflection, which we're going to be talking about for a couple days here. And reflection is going to be light with mirrors. So smoke and mirrors. No, just mirrors. Um, so mirrors can do all kinds of things, but today we're just going to do the boring flat mirrors just because I want to give you guys something easy before we do something a little bit more challenging um, and talk about, okay, well, what's so special about a flat mirror? Or let's just not even talk about a mirror in general. Let's talk about a surface, okay? Because all surfaces can reflect. In fact, um, you can think of two very different kinds of reflections. Let's suppose you compare, um, so you can have mirrors or you can have, let's say, white paper. And white paper, if it's very white paper, is going to reflect as much light as a mirror. You're like, what? Wait a minute. Yes, white paper will reflect as much light as a mirror does. They're both reflecting light, but they look totally, totally different, right? Now, black paper and the darker the paper it is, the more light is going to absorb, but any light that's not absorbed will be reflected. And so white paper is going to ref reflect a whole lot of light. It's going to reflect just as much light as a mirror does. So what's the difference? What's the difference between white paper and a mirror? Why can I see my reflection in a mirror, but I can't see anything close to a reflection in white paper? And that's because there are two different types of reflections. So this um, white paper is a form of reflection known as diffuse. And mirrors are a form of reflection known as specular. All right, two terms that you guys need to know. Um, diffuse, when you have something that is a diffuse reflection, the surface of the object, and this is kind of the key difference here, the surface of the object is going to be irregular and rough. So, um, when, and actually let me, let me just um, contrast that with the specular. So a mirror, so this is going to be diffuse, which is like your paper. A mirror is going to be flat. So this is going to be specular, which is like a mirror. All right. And so what's going to happen? 
what's going to happen is that um, when you have light that's going to come in, let me actually talk about specular first. And so if we have incoming light, it's going to come in like this. Okay? All that light is going to be reflected. And there's a law of reflection. Basically, all the light is going to reflect with the exactly the same angle as the incidence angle. Okay? And so this right here, let's use a different color for the reflection. This is going to reflect out like this. This is going to reflect out like that. And this is going to reflect out Oops. Like this. The color of the light is not changing. I just wanted to show you the difference between the incident light and the reflected light. Okay? Incident light. This is reflected light. Um, and notice that these beams of light are all parallel to begin with and parallel going out. And so if you have an image here that that light has a particular image that is showing you, when it reflects off the mirror, the same thing is going to be reflected back. It's going to show you exactly the same idea. Okay? But that's not true here for a diffuse kind of material. So diffuse reflection. Um, so what's going to happen is, so you can have some kind of incident light coming in like this. But when it hits these surfaces, because it's going to hit at all different angles, it's going to reflect differently. So this one might reflect out like this. This one might reflect out like that. And this one, which hits this surface, might even reflect back like this. So you can see that that reflected light is going in all different directions. There's no kind of directionality about it. And that's because you have a rough surface, and that's because where this light hits the surface, there's all different angles that it's actually hitting with. Although they're coming in parallel, they're going out in more or less random directions. And so that's why white paper, you can't see yourself in a sheet of white paper. Right? It's reflecting the light, but it's reflecting it in all different angles. And because of that, because of all this light getting all scrambled up at the molecular level, at, at the surface level of this material, you can't have any kind of image being produced. Okay? So, that's diffuse and that's specular. All right, what else? Um, how about a flat mirror? Let's talk about um, flat mirrors and, and how we're going to deal with them. So, last thing we're going to talk about today before we sign out here um, are going to be your flat mirrors. Okay? And so, um, basically, the, when you have a flat mirror, flat mirror, a oh, question here, what would happen if you had an immaculately flat piece of paper? Um, well, if it, was f if it was that flat, you would see yourself in it. But I think it's impossible because paper is made out of wood particles and you can't flatten them out. If you could flatten them out, then you could make yourself a paper mirror, which would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there you go. Good thought. Maybe a um, science fair project for next year. Okay, <laughs> make, a, make a paper mirror. All right, anyway, so flat mirror. Um, what you have, this is called, um, so this is the, um, this is the, the uh, just an orthogonal um, line here. So when you have a, when you have light come in, so let's say, let's just say when light is coming in, when it strikes the surface, um, it's going to reflect out in such a way that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are equal. So this angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So those two are equal. Um, and th that's true for any mirror. Okay, not just flat mirrors, but for any mirror, that's true. So when the light comes in, it's going to reflect out, and these two angles are going to be the same. 
Okay? And so when you do some imaging, which we're going to be doing soon, um, imaging of different things using especially the curved mirrors, when you do some imaging, um, we're going to look at how that works. But I want to go ahead and just end here um, and let you guys read the book and think through those answers. And then we're going to go ahead and continue on our discussion of mirrors and curved mirrors tomorrow. Okay? So any questions before we close out here? All right. So last of all, chess tournament in 14 minutes. All right. Adam has the link. I also have the link. Um, but you can't just click on the link. You need to become a member of our, our chess club first. So make sure you, you log in. And it might take you five minutes to get a free account and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to join our chess tournament, which I recommend, um, go ahead and get yourself a free account at chess.com. Join our club and then join the tournament. See you guys here in a little bit. Is this last part required for homework? You mean the chess tournament? No. No, that's not required. Um, but the homework, I believe, is one of, it's a, what's it called? It's a um, formative assessment, right? So, so go to the formative assessment. is not one of your normal assignments. Um, it's the formative assessment. There's a few questions there. It's up, it should be up on Google Classroom and the angle thing. Um, I, don't, I don't remember. Is that on the homework? I, it might be. I think it is. I think it's related. So yeah, I think it's related. So check it. So I don't think there's any calculations per se, but the concept of this law that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, I think that is on the homework. Just no calculation. Okay? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so see you guys. We'll talk about the homework tomorrow. And see you guys here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. See ya.